page 69 now. What's leasing? It's essentially a long-term rental. It's like you're signing for two or three years. That's usually the going rate for leasing. What is le what is involved in a leasing? If it if it ever asks you for the total lease, and they give you all of these pieces of information, it would be comprised of your down payment, your down payment, all the payments combined, all the payments combined, and then miles times the miles you went over. Right, the this is a dollar amount times 1.12 and you're like what is this right this is this looks too messy i want you to know that every time you see 1.12 that's just adding taxes to that right so tax and tax so that you should know okay what's happening there is that taxes are being added notice that the down payment has no tax if you're making a down payment that doesn't get taxed, okay? It's just the payment amount times 1.12, so this is basically adding taxes to your payment, and then you multiply it by the number of payments in that term that you're signing for. And then we would add miles, and overage is the, that's a downside of leasing, right? You get charged, this is the mileage cost. Is what we call the mileage cost so if you do go over you would be charged and this part here would be total payment amount and that chunk right there represents all the payments that you will have made over the um, term of your contract okay so some pros and some cons for leasing okay the pros, and this is why a lot of people want to lease it, because that nice car that they couldn't afford to purchase, they can lease it. Because lower monthly payments. That's one of the big lures why people want to lease. Like, oh, I can lease that thing. Because remember, when you're leasing it, you're not buying the entire thing. You're just paying for using it, right? Because a lot of the used vehicles you see in a lot are lease returns. When somebody is done with their two-year lease, they bring it back. They might lease another one, and then the used car they sell yet for profit, right? So they're making double, they're double dipping. They're making money off the lease, and then they're making money off of the sale. But it's a lower monthly payment. Um, another, uh, another pro would be lower maintenance costs. Why is that? Uh, vehicle, vehicles are under warranty. So, meaning if you consistently lease, if that's what you're gonna do, you are overall gonna have a lower maintenance cost because you always have a new car. So it's more reliable, it has warranty, and it's also safer. Vehicles, are equipped with latest safety features right some of you probably have uh, you're driving on a newer vehicle and they have all these fancy bells and whistles right like lane departure assist and you know, they, they tell you where your blind spot is. They have like 360 degree cameras all around you, right? Like it's, so it's getting safer. Um, they have sensors, they have more airbags, yada, 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 right? Like they meet latest standards. Um, I will also say this. Um, you get to try the car before purchasing it that could be an advantage right you're not locked in you didn't purchase it yet you're like you know i'm going to try this one and then maybe i'll try another one and then i'll make up my mind and actually commit to purchasing it uh, what else do i want to 
in here. Technically, um, no hassle returns. <laughs> this is uh, this is a little bit. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this one, but that's one of the, the things that appears to be appealing when you're done. When the term is over, simply return and either lease again or walk away. And there should be like a fine print under it, right? Uh, yeah, you're not going to walk away if you damage the car, if there are dense, dense scratches, if you had pets in the car, if you had like, if you dumped a Slurpee on the seat and stained everything. There's going to be surcharges, but in theory, you drive it around, you do your thing, you bring it back. Thank you very much. I'm walking away or lease another one. Because when you sell, right, you have to actually find a buyer to get rid of it so forth so that's those are my pros here and then the cons are gonna I'm gonna try to split this here the biggest reason I wouldn't buy these cars there are uh, mileage costs mileage costs most leases or lease agreements have a limit on the kilometers you are allowed to drive. There's a mileage restriction, okay? So sometimes it's just a fixed number. Like in two years, you're only allowed to drive 40,000 kilometers. That's it. If you go over that, if you bring it back, they're like, okay, you went over, we're gonna charge you extra. Sometimes it's a per year thing. You're allowed to drive 20,000 kilometers per year. So, but there's a, a restriction. Uh, you may have to pay for excessive wear You never own the car, so payments never stop. That is a that is actually right. That is a big reason why you should not be can't be used as an asset, can't be used as a collateral do you remember that word when we started loans you can't say oh yeah i have a car to you can put that towards the loan that i'm getting no you can't because it's being leased you can't use it as a collateral and last but not least you can't customize it you can't change the muffler you can't do anything anything permanent you cannot do it right um, that's that That's it. And I'm just going to talk, uh, mention two more terms that are important to know when it comes to leasing. Residual value. The value, the, the purchase, sorry, I'm just going to say the purchase price at the end of the lease so the most contracts would say hey this is the residual value of the car it's uh, like let's say the car is 40,000 brand new when you lease it two years are done they'll say you got to pay us 30,000 if you want to buy it at the end they have to state it on the contract and then there's the buyout cost 
the purchase price plus tax and taxes are 12 percent so residual values before tax buyout cost is after tax so i will say this before tax if it's residual value it's before tax buyout cost if it ever shows up it it wants uh, you to add taxes to it most likely just look for the wording Okay, let's go to page 70 and do an example here. I will start with the lease. I will not start with, uh, there's actually a loan option versus a leasing option. So Sam finds a new Honda Civic, I'd like to purchase at a local dealership. She negotiates a price of 20,000 plus 5% GST, 7% PST. So that's probably worth highlighting. She will choose between the following two options. Option one, purchase the car with a loan. Uh, you need a $5,000 down payment. She'll get a loan for the remainder. Interest rate, compounded, monthly payments, blah, blah, blah. Option two, you select a lease. That's what I'm gonna focus on at first. For the lease, you have a $5,000 down payment. $401 per month plus taxes. So I will hide, I will give that a, a different color because you got to make sure. It means literally add taxes to this for 48 months. At the end of the lease, she will have the option to purchase the car for 12000 plus tax. This is the residual value. Let's go res value okay just make sure you understand that sometimes they use the term sometimes they don't the lease has a limit of twenty thousand there's a limit of twenty thousand kilometers per year and if you drive more than that you have an eight cents per kilometer excess charge I will do B first, okay? So I will actually take the space up for B and then we'll do A underneath. What is Sam's total lease obligation in option two, including the purchase, if Sam drives 97,000 kilometers over the four years, okay? So what this is asking, it's, it's asking total lease plus purchase right so this is not just the lease it's we're also purchasing it so we will uh, determine that step by step let's do the lease first okay so lease there's a down plus payment times 1.12 times the months basically plus uh, miles times over overage times 1.12 yikes right it looks a little ugly but if you have this formula on your on your study sheet you should be fine i'm just gonna say once you've copied this i need you to listen to this part though sometimes there are there is no down payment it doesn't mention it or it just says zero down. Don't panic, it's just zero, right? Down payment is zero. Sometimes there is no overage. Sometimes we're not going over the mileage restriction. It may not even mention it. Then just forget about this bracket here. So this is kind of like a fluid formula, right? You, This could all be part of it, but you may only get the payments, for example. So don't, uh, don't worry about it. $5,000 down. My payment is 401. I'm gonna add taxes to it. 
and this is happening over four years, but in this case, they gave you that in months, so 48 payments plus this one, we have to be careful. How many miles are we over our, uh, over our restriction? 17,000. I will say this, miles allowed would be 20,000 kilometers times how many years? It's a four year lease, right? So we are allowed 80,000 kilometers over the four year term. This is what we're allowed, okay? We drove 97,000. So we need to, we're over, right? Uh, where am I gonna do this? Cause it's very messy here. I'm gonna do this on the side here. So we take 97,000 minus 80,000. So we're over by 17,000 kilometers over limit. 17,000 kilometers over limit. So you're like miles, kilometers, what's going on there? It's still called mileage restriction. They haven't changed that, but it means the distance driven. So 17,000 kilometers goes in here times the eight cents per kilometer and we have to add taxes to it, which is 12% as well. So that cleans up to 5,000. Then you do this part. That part amounts to 21,557 and 76 cents plus, let's do the mileage together here. 17,000 times 0 0.08 times 1.12. There it is. 1523.20. Okay. You add all of that up, all of these things, that would be. <clears throat> let me give me a second here. That's 28,080. And 96 cents. I'm going to underline, but that's not my final answer just yet. <clears throat> that's just the lease. Okay, all of this was part of the lease agreement. You come back and you're like, hey, I actually want to purchase it. So we go purchase. How much are we paying, it says? Because I'm, I'm trying to. I'm trying to make you aware that there's a 28 grand way up here, the original price, but there is also the 12,000 here. That is what you will have to pay when your lease is over. So let's go ahead and do that. That'd be 12,000 times 1.12. Instead of going 5% then 7%, this will do it all. And that gives you <clears throat> $13,440, also important. Total is uh, 28,080.96 plus 13,440. And here's your final answer, 41,520 and 96 cents. It's a bit of an overkill question. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, but this is an example, right? So that you can see uh, everything that could possibly be thrown at you. Okay, so that is how much it's the lease and purchase. Lease and purchase. It includes all applicable taxes done taxing, okay? So that's that. A. Let's just make it through this one and then we're, I'm gonna call it a, a class today. What is he asking? Uh, let's go up a bit. It says, what is the total cost of, of the car 
completing all the loan payments in option A. So we're going to go and actually figure out the loan. So we're going to go N, I, P, V, P, M, T. And here I really want you to pay attention because there's a one curve ball here. You've seen it in mortgages, but you haven't seen it in loans yet. Okay. Uh, I'm not, I don't have the question of, in the, on the screen, but it says what? Compounded monthly, correct? And it does say monthly payments, so 12 and 12. Future value, if it's a loan, that's zero. Payment, uh, we're asking, we don't know that, right? So we're going to put a dot there. Present value. Are you ready for this one? We need to figure out 28,500 plus taxes. So we're going to multiply that by 1.12. And when you do that, you get 31,920. This is a bit like there's a lot of moving parts here, but we do need to add taxes, right? Price, including tax. Okay. So we're going to take that. That's our loan. That's our present value. Minus, is there a down payment? It says, right, she has a $5,000 down payment. So we're going to put that towards this car. And that's going to leave us with 26920 Okay, that is our present value. The interest rate is 6.99. And we're doing this over five years, correct? So five times 12, that's 60. Now let's calculate our payments. Apps, there we go, 60. Payment to be determined, 12 and 12. So here it is. 532.92 is your monthly payment. But that's not that's not answering the question yet. That's on our on our quest there. Okay. So how much will you have paid here? You ready for this one? I will go N times payment. Okay, that's how much you will have paid overall. N, 60 payments at 532.92. But what's missing here? What else have you paid out of your own pocket? Down payment. So I'm gonna go plus down. So you're gonna go Total is uh, 60 times 532.92 plus 5,000. And that is, um, I have this here, yeah, 31,975.20. Plus 5,000. That's 36,975.20. Which one is cheaper overall? In this case, financing, right? Let me ask you this. What if the province says, why would Sam still want to buy, lease the car instead of purchasing it? And I, you look, look at the, look at your results, but over up, up top, you pay 401 a month. Here you pay 532 a month. So it's like Sam doesn't want the high monthly payment, stays with leasing, right? So 
when they do that, just look at and justify it. There's not really one right answer as long as you justify it properly. Okay. All right. Uh, to be honest, there's only one, one more on leasing. I will highlight this part right here, total paid for the car. Because that's what it would be in this case. 